is born. Young reading series one. Aladdin and his magical lamp. Chapter one. A magic uncle. There was once a lazy boy named Aladdin. His dad, who had to run the family business alone, died of worry. Aladdin's mother was in despair. One day, Aladdin was messing around as usual when a man came up to him. Aladdin, he cried, "It's me, Uncle Abanazar, your father's long-lost brother. I didn't know I had an uncle. I've been away for many years." That evening. Aladdin's new uncle invited himself to supper. When he heard that Aladdin didn't have a job, he bought him a fancy store to run. Aladdin and his mother were very happy. Neither of them guessed Abanazar was really a wicked magician. The next day, Abanazar took Aladdin on a long walk out of the city. Here we are. Said his uncle at last. He lit a fire, threw some powder on it, and said some strange words. A trap door made of stone appeared in the grass. Aladdin was astonished. His uncle could do magic. Under the stone there are many treasures, but I only want one," said Abanazar. "Bring me the lamp." But uncle. No buts. Take this ring; it will protect you," he added, pushing Aladdin down the steps. Aladdin went through four rooms of gold, into a garden of fruit trees. The fruit sparkled like pieces of glass. He saw the lamp, stuffed it into his pocket, then picked handfuls of the pretty fruit. Hand me the lamp," cried Abanazar from the entrance. But Aladdin had taken too long finding it. Abanazar thought he'd been tricked. How dare you keep the lamp for yourself? Before Aladdin could answer, there was a loud thud and everything went dark. Chapter two, two genies. Aladdin was trapped. It was cold, dark, and very spooky. He rubbed his hands to keep warm. Suddenly, a huge man rose up in front of him. "I am the genie of the ring," he boomed. "What can I do for you?" "Wow! Get me out of here!" shouted Aladdin. In a flash, he found himself outside on the grass. He rushed home to tell his mother what had happened. A Bunizar can't be my uncle. He did magic things and tried to kill me. He cried. "You and your stories," said his mother. "Now, what do you want for supper? I'll sell that old lamp to buy some food." She started to polish the lamp and jumped back in fright as a giant man floated out. I am the genie of the lamp. Your wish is my command. Do you have any food? Asked Aladdin. I'm starving. In an instant, a huge feast appeared on silver plates. The food and wine lasted for a week. When it had gone, Aladdin sold the silver plates. I'll give you a good price. My price is better. Now life was easy. If Aladdin or his mother wanted food, Aladdin just rubbed the lamp and asked the genie. One day, Aladdin was at the market selling plates when he saw some sparkling jewels. They're just like the glass fruit I picked in the cave. He thought in amazement. It wasn't glass after all. He ran straight home, found the jewels he'd picked in the cave, and hid them.
Chapter Three, The Sultan's Daughter. Early one morning, there was a command from the Sultan. Princess Badar Al Budur will go to the public baths today. Everyone must stay at home. Aladdin wondered what the fuzz was about. He hid at the bath so he could see the princess for himself. When she lifted her veil, Aladdin almost fainted. The only female face he'd seen before was his mother's, but Princess Badar was beautiful. He skipped home with starry eyes and a silly smile. Whatever's the matter? Asked his mother. I'm in love with the Sultan's daughter. He sighed. I must marry her. His mother laughed, but Aladdin was serious. If I don't marry Badar, I'll die. He said. He begged his mother to ask the Sultan for his daughter. Take him these jewels as a gift. He added, "The Sultan will never agree," cried his mother. But she was very worried about her son, so she did as he asked. The Sultan lived in a grand palace. On her first visit, the Sultan didn't even look at Aladdin's mother, but she went back again and again until finally. He spoke to her. Why do you keep coming to my palace? She told the Sultan about her son's love for Princess Badar. We are not worthy of your greatness, she mumbled. But here is a small gift. I've never seen jewels so big. Hmm. Badar does need a husband, the Sultan said. But you said my son could marry her. Cried a thin man beside him. The man was a powerful lord called the Vizier. He whispered something in the Sultan's ear. Then the Sultan turned to Aladdin's mother. "Your son can marry my daughter in three months' time," he said. "I'm going to marry the princess. I don't trust that Vizier." Chapter Four: The Wrong Husband. Two months later, Aladdin's mother was in the city. Everyone was talking about a royal wedding. Princess to marry this year's son today! Shouted a herald. Aladdin's mother rushed home to tell Aladdin the bad news. He was very upset. Until he remembered the genie of the lamp, he ordered the genie to disturb the couple that very night. Put the vizier's son out in the cold and bring Princess Badar to me. At midnight, the genie brought Badar to Aladdin's house and left the vizier's son in the dark, damp street. Help! I won't hurt you. You're safe with me," said Aladdin softly. Before sunrise, the genie returned Badar and the vizier's son to their room. "What's wrong?" asked Badar's parents at breakfast. "You look awful." Princess Badar kept very quiet. That evening, the vizier's son prayed for a peaceful night's sleep, but at midnight, the genie came again. After another cold night on the street. The vizier's son had had enough. I'm sorry, Sultan," he said. "Your daughter's wonderful, but I can't cope with these horrible nightmares." Ah, well, it wasn't meant to be," replied the Sultan, and he ended the marriage. Chapter Five: Aladdin Gets Married. Before long. Aladdin's mother went back to see the Sultan. Tell your son to send me more jewels, he told her. I want forty plates full, he went on, carried by eighty servants dressed in silk. Only then can Aladdin marry Badar. 
the genie managed this easily. Within an hour, a long procession was on its way. The sultan couldn't believe his eyes. Tell your son he can marry my daughter right away, he told Aladdin's mother. But first, Aladdin wanted a home for Badar. He described his perfect palace to the genie, and the genie built it overnight. Marble floors, jewels in the walls. Aladdin rode to the sultan's palace dressed in his finest clothes. The wedding day began with music and dancing and finished with feasting and fireworks. That evening, Badar went to her new home. She was delighted. Aladdin was the most handsome man she'd ever seen and their palace was the best in the world. Chapter 6 Abanazar Returns Far away in the desert, Abanazar learned of Aladdin's good fortune. He must have escaped with a lamp, he snarled. He went to Aladdin's city to find the lamp. New lamps for old, he shouted. New lamps for old. Badar heard the shouts from her palace. That sounds good, she thought and found an old lamp to give him. Abanazar ran to a quiet corner and rubbed the lamp. What can I do for you? asked the genie. Take me, the palace and the princess to the middle of the desert, said Abanazar. Later that morning, the sultan looked from his window and nearly fainted. My d d daughter's p palace has g gone, he said. He thought Aladdin had tricked him and sent some soldiers to arrest him. Aladdin returned from a hunting trip to find a group of soldiers and no palace. He was just as surprised as the sultan. Don't worry, I'll find your daughter, he promised. You'd better, or else you're dead. Aladdin clasped his hands together in despair, and the genie of the ring appeared. Oh, I'd forgotten about you, said Aladdin. Please help me. I can't bring Badar to you, he replied, but I can take you to her. Seconds later, Aladdin was beneath Badar's window. A wicked man tricked me. Don't worry, Aladdin called. I have a plan. Agree to eat with him tonight. I'll sneak in with some poison and you can put it in his wine. Abanazar was so busy gazing at Badar. He didn't see her poison. His drink. After one sip, he fell to the ground and died. Aladdin searched the palace for his lamp. One wish later, he and Badar were home. Chapter 7 The Evil Brother But they still weren't safe. Abanazar had an evil brother and he wanted revenge. The brother dressed up as a Fatima, a holy woman. He stood outside Aladdin's palace pretending to heal people. Badar was very excited to see Fatima and invited her inside. What a lovely hall, said the fake Fatima. But if you hang a rock's egg from the dome, it will be even better. The rock was an enormous bird which laid huge white eggs. Badar loved Fatima's suggestion and asked Aladdin. No problem, he said, and called the genie of the lamp. Bring me a Roxas egg. What? Anything but that, wailed the genie. If you ask for such a thing, I must kill you. But I know it wasn't your idea. 
he went on. Fatima is really Abenazar's brother in disguise. He wants you dead. Aladdin was shocked. He had to think fast. Oh, my head's so sore. He asked Fatima to heal his headache. As the evil brother came closer, Aladdin grabbed his dagger and killed him. With no more evil men to bother them, Aladdin and Badar were safe. In time, Aladdin became sultan and his mother became a grandmother. They had all they could wish for, so the lamp and ring were left in a drawer. Who knows, the genies may still be there today.